In this Studio Suite video, we're going to talk about the main menu, the basic setup of Studio Suite, global features, and general navigation. Here we are at the main menu of Studio Suite. Now, in single user environments or in multi user environments, not everybody logged into Studio Suite is going to want to see all of these 29 modules that are available to you. So you can specify on a per user basis what modules appear. So you can narrow the list of choices and also implement security measures to prevent people from accessing data that they shouldn't access. You notice some of the buttons have numbers on them. Those numbers indicate items that are overdue. So I can see I've got 109 overdue tasks. Two of them are due today. I've got four projects with overdue equipment. One has equipment due today. I have 77 web requests, which is a new module. 122 overdue invoices, one due today. On the right side, we see the daily notes. Everybody's got access to this, and you can expand this area by clicking on the notes page. Below that are messages for the current user. Hovering will show you a detail of what those are. And clicking on it will bring you to more details about that message. We can use the back button to get back to the main menu. Below messages are tasks. And now we have status colors and progress bars to show how far along items are coming. So I'm going to click on this task to say that I'm a little further along on getting it done. Go back to the main menu. And now we'll see the progress bar grow. Below that is callbacks. And below that are all the events that are scheduled for today. These are resources, rooms, equipment, people, media that are specifically scheduled. And as I hover over them, I see further details about participants, phone numbers, and other items that are scheduled on this project on this day. New in 9 is the ability to narrow this view down to just the items that you want to see. So you don't have to look at all of them. You can just see events that are relevant to you. We can also click the Email This button to create an email with a list of all of the events that are scheduled on this day. And you can send those out to the people that you need to send it to. Below that is a Print This button, which will print the dashboard on a big piece of paper so you can hang that on the wall. One of the new features in 9 is Employee Schedules, so you can see at a glance who's scheduled today and what the hours are. Before we get into details about specific modules, let's go into the setup area to make sure we get set up properly. This is where you create and define the different companies that you can use Studio Suite with. If you have just one company, that's fine. But if you run multiple companies, you can enter them all here and kind of pose as different companies depending on what kind of work you're doing. If you're doing video production or audio production or rentals or anything like that. You can also select your language. A new in version 9 is the ability to specify a default phone number format. Every new contact record will have this phone number to format by default, and you can change it per contact as needed. Here's where you enter in your logos, specify your taxes, and to define the kind of people that are typically involved in the projects that you work on. In module preferences, we can get into a good bit of detail about invoice settings, project preferences, events, and including a new multi-day as continuous, which we put in to accommodate long-term rentals. More, more detail on that later. Media Inventory now has Automatic Reconcile, and you can also specify whether the barcode for Media Inventory is based on either the UPC code or the record number. In the Library module, you can specify starting numbers and where your default Media Inventory comes from, default time code, and set up some petty cash preferences. The Value List tab and Category Subtab is where you specify the different categories of items and services it should be providing, and how you want them sorted and subtotaled by. Booking statuses is where you can find all the different statuses and the different colors that correspond, and also specify some particular ones that Studio Suite knows it needs to know about so it can automatically enter those colors as needed. We'll jump over to user accounts now. User accounts is where you can specify all the different users within Studio Suite. There's 12 different access levels that correspond to typical roles people have at the studio, like owner, manager, sales, editor, engineer, vault, accountant, assistant, reception, runner, etc. If we go into the Detail tab of User Accounts, and then the Account Permissions, we can pick from almost 200 individual permissions that you can grant or deny different users, allowing them access to certain features, functionalities, and modules. In Account Preferences, we can specify which main menu they want to get, and some other things like their email setup, some individual project preferences, and some calendar preferences, including do you always want to keep the calendar window open in a separate window? Do you want to allow them to sync the calendar to iCal or Outlook, or automatically sync the calendar to iCal or Outlook? All right, we'll head back to the main menu, and to show some of the basic navigation and global features, we'll head to the Contacts module. Here we've got a tabbed interface. Some of the tabs have a red dot, which indicates that there's important information. While we're here, I'll point out that you can always tell where you are 
By looking at the red text, we can instantly see we're in the contacts module looking at financial information and then looking at invoices. We could also look at client-specific rates for this client or vendor purchase orders. The media tab shows us a window into the library module. We can click on one of the blue go to buttons to take us to that record in that module. And in fact, we're looking at all eight of the media assets that belong to that client. We can now click the back button to go back to where we were in the contacts module. Another global feature you see in Studio Suite is the function bar, and that's how we manipulate the records in the database. So to create a new record, you click the new button, and so on with duplicate, delete, find, find all, omit, and sort. Omit is like a temporary delete. Find All will get all of your records. Notice we're on one record now. If I click Find All, that'll bring me to all of them, and from there I could go into the List tab to see them all. I could use the Go To button to bring us right into that particular record and see all of those details. You'll often see smaller green new buttons, and those are to create new records within the portal area below. You can just select what it is you're doing and type what it is you're talking about. You'll often see a Print This button and sometimes an Email This button, which will create an email with the current record. One of the new global features in Studio Suite 9 is the new Quick Find bar. Here I could type in Sony, and that'll find all of the Sony records. And then from there, I could go find the detail of the particular one that I was looking for. A tab that's in every module of Studio Suite is the Attach and FTP tab. This is where you can attach files on your computer or anywhere on the network to this record in the database. So I'm going to link a file, which stores the path to where that file is. I've just linked this Word document, and now at any point in the future, I could come back to this record and click on this, and that happens to be a script for the project that this client is working on. It opens it up right away. One of the new features in 9 is a built-in FTP client. Suppose I had made edits on this, and I now want to upload it back to the client. I click on the blue FTP button. That'll bring us into the FTP module, where I can quickly select my favorite client's FTP sites, and then connect them. So there I'm looking at the Sony FTP site, and now I can just upload that file. It's giving me the option to add this to a project as a billable event. In this case, I'll say no. But notice that it's kept a log of the date, time, from where, and to where that particular file went. And of course this works with any kind of file, whether it's Word or Excel, audio or video files, you name it, it'll do it. Now suppose the client had a file on their FTP site and they wanted you to download it and attach it to their record in the contacts module. Well that's all built right in now. So I'm going to click on the FTP file button and I'm going to reconnect. I'm still connected to Sony. So there I am. Uh, let's say I need to download this finished Final Cut Pro project. So I'm going to click on that and hit yes. So it's telling me that this file already exists. I'm going to download it anyway and replace the one that I've got. Notice that it gives me the option to add this one as a billable event as well. I'll say no for now. So now I could click on this, it's going to launch Final Cut Pro for me. And it's also kept a log of the date, time, from where, and what it is that I got it. So this makes electronic file delivery really easy to do right inside Studio Suite. Almost every module in Studio Suite has a print tab, and this is where you can print the common things that you would expect to print from the current module that you're in. Okay, you've been waiting this long, I'm going to show you the most exciting new feature in Studio Suite 9. This comes in the internet version. I'm going to go ahead and log in. You'll notice we're in a browser. I'm going to log in. And while this is logging in, I just want to clarify that this does not come with Solo, does not come with Studio Suite Pro, does not come with Studio Suite Network. It only comes with Studio Suite internet version. So here are at the main menu of Studio Suite. It looks a little bit different, but roughly the same. And we get what we're saying is about 75% of the same features. Let's go into the contacts module and see how it works. So we can go into the list view. We can see everybody we need. Let's go into a particular client. Uh, we can also go into find mode. So I'll click find. Let's go look at Sony. And this uh, notice over here on the left, um, we've got to press some buttons to actually execute things. So I'm going to perform that find. And it found me a list of Sony people. And I can go back into James Johnson, who we were talking to before. And there's the calls that I was supposed to make for him. Let's jump out and go to, say, the calendar. That's pretty important. So let's go over here. And you can see the speed is pretty good. So let's fast forward to the following week. And um, let's change the status of this from bumpable to confirmed. And let's change the time of it back to, say, 5 PM. And then let's put some notes in here. I'm going to save those changes. The multi-event handler comes up, but uh, I'm not going to change that to the other items. 
So notice the status has changed. Uh, we come back in green for confirmed, and we see the hello comment that we put in there. So let's go into the projects module to look for a particular project. The one I'm looking for, I'm going to hit find, is called big project. And I don't need to be exact with this. I could just kind of type it loosely. So I'm going to go ahead and hit perform find. Yep, that's the one I'm looking for. What I want to show you is the media tab. Uh, so I can see all the media assets for this project. I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one. And I'm going to flip through them all just to see them all. And I've got some titles on the last one. And I've also got the checkbox on the real history checked. So I'm going to go look at that. I can see that this one's been checked out at this date and time by Joel Stoner. So all right, that's OK. I'm going to jump back to the project now. And let's make an invoice. I'm going to select all for invoice. And it's telling me some of these have been invoiced already, but I'm just going to go ahead and select all anyway. And let's invoice the selected items. And I'll call it the final invoice. And boom, here we are at the invoice. So we've just uh, looked at media assets, uh, looked at the project, looked at the calendar, created an invoice, all from the online internet version of Studio Suite. We think that's pretty cool. Next, I'm going to show you the iPhone. Stay tuned. So here we are at the iPhone interface. I'm just going to type, uh, I'm going to log in. So we see contacts, calendar, and tasks from the iPhone. Let's go to contacts. And the person we're looking for is actually Simon, that guy from Sony. So we'll look for him, type him in. And there he is. So we'll click on him. That brings up everything we need to know about Simon, the phone number, emails, etc. Let's go back again. Let's go look at the calendar. So this is everything we're looking at on uh, September 9th, 09-09-09 for Studio Suite 9. Uh, if we want, we can go ahead and look at uh, Studio A. Let's see what's going on there in Studio A. They're working from 3.45 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. So I can uh, head back to the main menu. And let's go look at Tasks this time. So click on Tasks. Good. The only task I've got is to fine-tune the edit. Sounds good to me. All right, so that's the iPhone in Studio Suite 9. This comes with Studio Suite Network and Studio Suite Internet. OK, so the next global feature in Studio Suite 9 is what we're calling Web Request. So pretend this is your site. Uh, you can have a button on your site, which is going to call up a special page uh, of HTML that we give you that links into the Studio Suite database. So let's say um, this is Mary, and she is a customer. And she's going to fill out the form here. Okay, so she's got everything filled out, and so now she's going to submit a request. And uh, then she'll get a confirmation on screen. She'll also get a confirmation email, as will you. And then it will also show up in Studio Suite as a new web request. So you'll see a number here. And then we can go into the web request module. I'll find all, and we'll go to the end. And here's Mary's request. So now, um, all we've got to do is confirm that she is one of our clients. I'm just going to, for now, pick ABC Corporation, pretend Mary works for ABC. Uh, and so let's accept that. So I'm going to click on the accepted box here. And here we are in a brand new Studio Suite project with uh, the beer commercial all set to go. Mary's notes are in there. And we can proceed on and start booking the stuff. Let's call this TV. And we'll go to next. So now we know we need edit one with Steve. And so let's just get uh, you know edit one in there, and you get the idea. So um, web request global feature in Studio Suite nine. This comes with Studio Suite Network and Studio Suite Internet only. It does not come with the uh, Studio Suite Solo or Studio Suite Pro. Okay, just a couple more global features for this video. The Contacts module imports and exports out to V cards. The Invoices module now exports out to QuickBooks on Mac as well as on PC. And in general, we've got easier exports out to Excel, uh, both on the Events module and on the Invoices. So there's a whole ton of new features uh, we're going to go over on kind of a module by module basis. Uh, but stay tuned for the next video, which is uh, talking about bookable items or resources.
namely contacts, rooms, equipment, media inventory, and we're going to briefly mention our new categories and items module to make it easy to create things like services and so forth. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.